choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Eternal Midnight, and we're doing train spotting and T2 train spotting for the final um, weekend of February. So, train spotting is one of my favorite films of all time, and I just wanna, and I love, honestly, I think the sequel is really underrated, but I'm not sure what you have thought of it, Chad. But before we get to T2 train spotting, let's go with the first train spotting, the one that came out in 1990. Six or 1995, I believe, when uh, with, when Ewan McGregor wasn't that famous yet, when he was just a really... He, 96. Three years before episode one. Right, there you go, 96. So um, when Ewan McGregor wasn't really that famous yet, and he was still doing really small budget films like this, and he wasn't Obi-Wan Kenobi at all. And this, in my opinion, this is his best role. So okay, first impressions, Chad, what did you think of Train Spotting? Just to follow up with what you just said, Anyone who says Ewan McGregor looked like he was kind of, like he's a bad actor because he looked like he was sleepwalking his way through the prequels, which I kind of think he was, watch this because it came first and you will see the range that this man can get. I know, right? This is my favorite Ewan McGregor role and I'm surprised he didn't win any awards because I love it. Uh, I thought Birds of Prey was your favorite Ewan McGregor role. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He was awesome as Black Man. <laughs> he was. He was. He was fun to watch. But like, we're not talking about him. We're talking about Ewan McGregor from as Mark Ranton from Train Spotting. So, what do you think? Uh, of so, uh, all right. So, the biggest problem was you asked me what I thought of it. I think too soon. I think you didn't give me enough time to okay kind of comprehend what I thought because for anyone out there who hasn't seen this, and this is your first time listening to us talk about this um watching this is not like watching something like uh, justice league or yeah. uh, a marvel movie where you kind of get the movie as you're watching it this is something that's going to take a few days to digest kind of like watching like requiem for a dream or something it's yeah. it's going to take you a few days to fully pull it all in and realize what you watched. So when you asked me first, I think it was like 12 hours after I watched it. Oh, yeah. And like, I basically watched it and went to bed. <laughs> and it was like, I still needed that whole day to process it. So upon finishing it, at first I just kind of was like, what, what did I watch? <laughs> but um, after watching T2 and having about a week to think about it, I don't think, I love it as much as you do, yeah. But I can see why it's like your. Isn't it your number one? It's my number two. Okay, it was your number two. I can see why it's your number two because for people who are into this genre, I'd say this takes the cake. And like I've seen Requiem for a Dream, and there might be a few times where I kind of do references to the two of them because they kind of follow the same yeah. kind of beats here and there about drug addicts. I would much rather watch this before I ever watch Requiem for a Dream. Ever. Yeah, because Re Re Requiem for a Dream is, like, it's really Scariest depressing. Stuff. It's really depressing to the point where it's really unrealistic. I mean, like, yes, I know that's, like, they're, no, no, sorry, not unrealistic, where it's really depressing to the point where, like, it's just too much. Train Spotting has, has a blend of, like, yeah, there's some dark as fuck moments, but there's also... But there's also redemption shit. Yeah, there's also redemption shit, so which, I, which I do like, which I do think that, you know... Because really, train spotting is the, the guy who made this, Irvine Welsh, really was a heroin addict. And he told how it was like as a cautionary tale for any other people who want to try to get into it. And man, if you. Oh, you mean the guy who wrote the book, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's actually in the movie. He was a. Uh, he was a. Uh, um, he was the Mikey guy Forrester? that. Mark, yeah, Mikey Forrester, yeah, him. He was, he was, Ir he, uh, Mikey Forrester was played by Irvine Welsh. And it's, it's really fascinating because, in, because uh, in, in, in this, I, okay, the reason why I like it is because I, because, okay, for one, if, I have heard people say they don't like the movie because it advocates drugs. That's not what's happening. If you know that you haven't watched the movie, that is not what's happening there. I like it because it's really a peek into the world of like, you know, this is what it's like for heroin addicts. And, and I did like the fact that, oh, we're seeing a different side to, to this, you know, because we always say, like, oh, drugs are bad. But like here, it's like, no, drugs are bad, but this is why people take them. 
you know, and I, 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 I really appreciate that because it gives us like, a, you know, like Mark Rendon. Okay, he's not, he's not necessarily a good guy, but he's, but he's not he's a trying. bad guy either. He's trying. He's to, yeah, he's trying to be a good guy. Like there, are, there are like this, like, like one of his friends, Begbie, is a real piece of shit. Like, yeah. Like, you know what? I'm gonna. I, I was gonna say this for later. I'm gonna say it now. I fucking hate Begbie. I, I hate his character as much as I fucking hate Umbridge in Order of the Phoenix. I despise this fucking character. I hate it every time I saw him on screen, and I just wanted somebody to kill him in both movies. I just wanted somebody to just unload a bullet into his head. Yeah, because it's really like, he's really a really piece of shit human being. Like, it, like he's, he's, he's a different breed than the others. Because like, Sick Boy and Spud, I mean, like, they're, they're, they've done some shady shit too, but like, by the by, they're also trying. You know, they're also trying to be good people despite what's happened. Uh, Spud, yes. Sick boy, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like sick boy, like he. Dude, not by the end of the movie, boy. the sick boy was a pimp. <laughs> so yeah. you're not a good person if you're a pimp. Yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough. But like, but he's not like a piece of shit like Begbie was. I mean, like Begbie was really like nobody compared to Begbie. Begbie yeah, was just like, trash. Like, but like um okay before we get into T two like the reason why I like train spotting a lot is the fact that we again besides the look into drug addicts we see like we see like the genuine like bond that these friends have even with Begbie like at the beginning they're 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 all friends and they all get into like the drug habit but it's because and we see why I mean like Renton is unfulfilled in his life that's why he always takes drugs and like sick boy just thinks it's fun and until until again so like okay, here did that death of the baby shock you like you know when they saw the the dead baby in the the, the crib or... i don't want to say no because it was spoiled for me but maybe because i don't like the movie as much as you do it didn't have as big of an impact on me because i felt like by this point in the movie i barely knew sick boy and the what was the mom's name allison yeah allison yeah we didn't know her yeah. at that point the baby was just a, a baby who was around and i mean i'd say the visual of the dead baby was more fucked up than yeah, yeah, the visual. Actually happening the problem is the problem is it didn't go anywhere it didn't like we saw sick boy cry over it but it didn't get touched on again until a scene in t2 yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, so I can see why, again, for someone who loves the movie as much, I can see, like, almost a first timer maybe going into Fellowship of the Rings might be like, ah, Boromir is just a dick. He deserved to die. But after repeated viewings, you start seeing, you, like, you, you witness more of his arc and he becomes, he means more of a character to you. So, like, that for you, having watched this so many more times than me, yeah. it obviously means something different to you than it does to me. Yeah, and and, and 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 related to that baby scene, like Danny Boyle, like because he directed Twenty Eight Days Later, right? So like, there's a scene where he shows like you know his horror movie skills because that scene where the dead baby is crawling and Mark is like screaming because he's going remission, and it does turns the head extra style. It's like you didn't, but like that was so <laughs> fucked up. Honestly, the first time I watched it, like, what the fuck am I watching? That was a I will give it. They he did a damn good job directing the scene where um he was he, where. Sick boy was having, or sick rent boy was having uh, withdrawals. Yeah, that, that was great. very well done. I loved the visuals of his room, of everything he was hallucinating and seeing under the bed sheets. That was very, very underrated. I think that was like, that scene alone is almost something that could like sell this movie. I think to more people. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, this also is a movie that almost made me puke because like. When Mark Renton dives in the toilet, and you like in, in like, the very first, like I was so, that was so like, wow, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, uh, and you know, it's funny. I I actually just watched a movie. Ironically, I just watched another movie last night that had a character digging around in a fucking toilet. Uh, so it's like I've seen that twice this week now. But <laughs> fun that actually, um, that actually, um, in in making the movie that didn't, that didn't actually smell that bad because. It was actually chocolate mousse that Danny Boyle just put there. This to make it look a disgusting toilet too. <laughs> but like, what I appreciate about this movie is how, is how you know, honestly, is how grounded because like, there's no CGI. 
whatsoever. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, We're paraphrase. There is one scene where it's CGI, where the baby turns its head, because they're not going to actually make a baby turn its head. But other than that, I mean, like, it's all practical effects, which I really love, because you always like, practical effects make it better. Like, like okay, like that scene where, where Mark Renton, like, there's a close-up of him, his arm, and he injects the, he injects the, he injects the heroin into his veins. I hate watching stuff like that so much. Yeah, but like, but here's, but here's the thing that that, that ain't CGI. Danny Boyle actually created a prosthetic, prosthetic arm that shot out liquid so that they can make a more realistic feel. And like, it did, right? It wasn't. It felt. It felt real. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, heroin to me is like one of the most terrifying things in existence. Like, yeah. I. No, no insult to anyone listening who does heroin, I guess, but I don't know how someone could convince themselves to inject the needle into their arm. Yeah, yeah, same. Filled thing. with chemicals, I, 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 I don't get it, and I just I don't like watching it. <laughs> I just don't because I've, I've, I, I've known people who died from overdoses, and it's just it's yeah. it's a yeah. lifestyle that genuinely like scares me and i try my hardest to stay away from it like yeah heroin. and like tommy tommy in this movie is a perfect example yeah tommy was he was the only straight edge one who hung out with all these drug addicts and he's the one who lost his life yeah that, that, that was so fucking all cool. over all stemming from a mistake of accidentally giving somebody the wrong videotape led to his path of dying from HIV, AIDS. Ah, that was so fucked up. Just so rough to watch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's how, that's how gritty and real this feels. It's like, this is like, this is shit that's, that, that happens. And like, the first time I watched it, I was like, the first time I watched it, watched it I was like morbidly curious. Like, what are drugs anyway? Like, the, the first time I watched it, it's like, I am never injecting shit into my veins ever in my life. I'm never doing that. <laughs> like, that is just like one of the most fucked up things that, like, person can do like inject heroin into their veins it's like and like and go through like and go through all the pain of like remission like with Mark Rand's hallucinating and all that and like <laughs> and honestly there's also really some comedic moments too in the movie like when Spud like he he takes a dump in like the sheets and like no no I want it and like <laughs> and it flatters gross. over yeah but it was funny as fuck wasn't it I was like oh, it was hilarious <laughs> it's like yeah he's never coming back to this house or what's it when he thought when um Mark found out that the chick he slept with was By the way, you recognized her voice, right? Yeah, she's Merida from Brave. Yeah, it's Merida from Brave. No, but which, do you know that she's... anyone listening, I love Brave. It's like one of my favorite Pixar movies. No, but do you know she's in, she's in a, she, is in, she is in another movie you love? That I love? Yeah, don't... don't oh, that you love? No, no, that you love also. Don't Google it. I already knew it. I what? just don't. I just don't remember what character she played. What? Deathly Hallows Two. Exactly. She played. The I don't remember who she played. She played the Grey Lady, the one that Harry talks to. Oh yeah! Now I can hear it when I think of the way the Grey Lady talks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then there's also another Harry Potter actor in the in the movie. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Spud's girlfriend. You know, the one that he she that tried to sleep with him. Yeah, that's that's a young Shirley Henderson who played Morning Myrtle in Chamber of Secrets. Who was it? Shirley Henderson. That's a young Shirley Henderson who played um, uh, Morning Myrtle in Ch- Chamber of Secrets. Jesus, they uglied her the fuck up. Because <laughs> I didn't think she was that bad looking in this movie, but Morning Myrtle was the yeah, that was the whole point. Yeah, but yeah, Trudy Henderson. No, I get that. I, it's just I always love when Hollywood does it. They take somebody who's not that bad looking and makes them just like, oh, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, um, um, so I mean, like, okay, so, um, at the very end of the movie, of course, you know, you have Mark Ranton stealing the money that they made, and like, it's like, wow, like, what, what a piece of shit, dude. Like, but like, no, I understand. Yeah. Under- because I agree with, with his reasoning. I agreed completely. And I mean, it, that kind of segs into T2, which we don't need to get to yet. But he said it to Sick Boy. You're just pissed you didn't think of it first. Yeah. Because think about it. I, I'm genuinely shocked 
like that. The fact that Bagby was sleeping with the bag. Yeah. And you know, Sick Boy would if Sick Boy had woken up, he probably would have killed Mark and grabbed the money and left himself. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He probably would have. Yeah, that's really true. <laughs> I I I really feel like um I I understood where Mark was coming from because like okay, he hated Bagby. He he Sick Boy will 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 we'll be mad, but he won't like hold a grudge. And he felt yeah. sorry. He felt sorry for Spud. He really felt. That's why he left money for Spud, you know. And then I, I love what Spud said in T two. <laughs> I left you four thousand dollars. I was a fucking junkie. What the fuck did you think I was gonna do with it? Yeah. Uh, and then like, and then like, okay, yeah. He he bags the money and runs away. And 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 man, I was like, I, the first time I watched, I was like, wow, what a piece of shit. But like. After repeated things, I was like, yeah, I understood why you did that. Because if I was in that situation, I probably would have... I mean, it. as weird as it sounds, he was the one who fronted half the cash, though, to make the initial deal to get it before they sold it to get the sixteen grand. So it's like, if you think about it, he was owed at least half of it. Yeah, that's really true. Because without half of his money, they never could have made the initial deal to begin with. So, I don't know. I mean... But at the same time, it's like, if you think about it, he was the only one who, like that, he moved to London to get away from all this shit. Yeah, and then he had his life on track, and then Begbie started fucking it up. Sick Boy started fucking it up even more. Yeah. And then it's like, I moved to London to get away from you assholes, and you guys are just making my life shit again. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I can't that, blame him for saying, fuck this, I'm taking the money and running. Yeah, is it because like, he really feels like, I think that's I, I think that's what I like about you know Mark Renan's character development throughout this entire movie. It's like the fact that at the beginning he's so loaded with drugs and like and so fucked up in his head that he he can't see that his friends are abusing him like, to a point of like it's actually unhealthy, you know, like he can't he, but like at, at the end of the movie, like he's he's clear enough to the fact that uh, I think I think he made a choice when his friends asked him for money and said like that num that that amount and then that that big he knew that, okay, once this is done, I'm taking the money and leaving because I cannot stand the fact that, the fact that, um, because I know if I stay here, I'll, I'll be constantly abused by, by these so-called friends of mine. So I'm going to take the money and run, which I understand now. Like, okay, after repeating things, I understand. I fully understand why he did it because I probably would have done it too because I would have wanted to get away. <laughs> and. And honestly, like I, I, I really, I really, I really felt it. I really felt that, like, yeah, shit, man. I mean, like, it sucks to leave them behind, but if it's only for own well-being, then you, you, you probably should. I mean, like, I think that's a lesson, like, that, 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 that this movie's trying to teach. It's like, yeah, it sucks to leave your friends behind, but like, you're at a point in your life where you're so, like, you're so fucked, and you have no progress. And when you are, when you have made progress, they come back and destroy everything that you've made. So I think you have to leave. But yeah, it was one of those things where if he had not left, time would have just kept going and he would have woken up one day and been like 35 and been like, half my fucking life is gone. What have I done with it? Yeah. And it's like, he knew, he's like, I have to go. And it's like, it's, at T2, when we kind of hear about his life, it's kind of sad because it's like, oh. It didn't go how he wanted it. No, to, but at least but he wasn't like, a drug addict. At least, he, at least he tried. Yeah, I mean, like, it's all we can do as some bunch. Right? We, we can try. I mean, like, and and when when I I love that you know that hopeful optimism that he has, and when he, he's walking away from the from it all, and he's like he's smiling, like I'm going and choosing life. You know, I'm going to be just like you. The the car, the house, the job, the the money, the family. I'll have it all, and uh, I won't be part of that that scene anymore. So like when. So, the, so that, now that, 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 that transitions to T2 where we meet these characters like 25 years later. Or, or By the way, before we leave, I love that scene at the end of the movie where Spud and Sick Boy are in the hallway and the cops show up and it shows Begbie in the room trashing it. And he's just like, bastard, you bastard. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, good. Fuck you. I'm glad the cops are here to take you away, you piece of fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate no, that character. No, because, and I hate it even more in this movie. No, because like because because Begby for okay, Begby for 
Bebby says he's not addicted to drugs, but he's addicted to like bloodlust, which is like a worse. No, he's a fucked up psychopath. <laughs> which is like a worse. The guy bumps into him at yeah. the end of the movie, and he just nearly beats the guy to death. It's like, yeah. dude, this guy has major psychological issues. He really, really does. And then like, and okay, so that now now it's like Wisin Titi too, where we meet these characters like years later, and 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 okay, so. I'll ask you again, Chad, your initial impressions of T2. Did you like it? You ate it? So, on first viewing of T2, I I want to say up until about the halfway point, I was liking T2 better than the first one. But then I feel like there was some stuff in the second half that wasn't bad, but it wasn't as, I think, solid as the buildup. And then just thinking about it more, the first one and this one, I mean, they're they're completely different types of movies. I mean, the first one is all about the drugs, the life of doing drugs. And this one is more about just a life of crime, per se. Yeah. It's a different type of movie. So it's it, it's hard to compare them. I'd say this one felt more mainstream than the first one. Yeah. But I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, so I'd say, I'd say if there's anyone out there listening who watched the first one and maybe you didn't think it was for you, give this one a watch because yeah. I think it's a good way to follow up with these characters and see where they're all at. And I mean, Mark, hey, he got away from that life. Yeah. He, I mean, he shot up with heroin once or twice in this movie. It was pretty. But funny. he, but he never, like, he never fell into the addiction. Yeah, he never became a junkie. The only question, I mean, I, I, I'd say the best, the best character, yeah, I'd have to say Spud. Yeah, his man. life was shit, and he turned himself around. Yeah, damn good. Like a Spud, like he still was a heroin addict when at the beginning of this movie, but at the end, like he, he tried to fucking kill himself. I, I love that I love that that scene where Mark and Rex Spud walk a, across the Scottish Highlands and then like Mark says you know, dude you can't change the fact that you're an addict so be addicted but just be addicted to something else something else will push your life forward, and and then he, and then she, Mark Spud like what like rock like boxing or run into like uh, boxing or the, the raging bull and like boxing like, is awesome yeah but like boxing or running or something that that pushes your life, and that, that's an allegory for Irvine Welsh because Irvine Welsh, he got out of heroin because he wrote the books about heroin. That's what, and that's what Spud is doing because, like, at the end of the movie, like, I've I've read the books and like I've read I've read, the books, I've read some of the books, and those lines Spud writes are lifted verbatim from the book. So in a way, it's like Spud is becoming the Irvine Welsh of the story because he's finally getting out of the heroin addiction by writing about his experiences. Right, which is which is awesome. Which I think is really like, that's an awesome way to get out and get yourself out of that hole that you've had for forty five years, or for not forty five years, for like thirty five years. Because I think the main thing, the main theme out of both of these movies is is trying. You know, it's trying. It's trying to get yourself out of your shitty life that you have put yourself into, and the fact that you're doing effort is already enough. Like it's it's small, but I like the fact that they're doing effort. Like like. Like, I, Mark comes back to, like, reminisce, but, like, I love the fact that it shows that no one has forgiven him for it. Because, yeah, I mean, like, while I understand your motives, it was a pretty shit thing to do. I mean, like, when you're... I, obviously, if, like, say we knew Mark wasn't the main character, I thought Sick Boy was going to kill him in the bar. Yeah. I yeah. thought he was actually going to kill him. Yeah. The, okay, so that's another weird thing I thought about this movie. And I wanted to see if maybe you can explain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Mark saying him and Sick Boy were best friends when they were younger, I got no impression from the first movie that they were ever best friends. Oh, no, because like... Is that um, just something they added for this movie? No, 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 no. Okay, wait. Okay, so... Or did they just not show it well enough in the first movie? They didn't... Okay, that, that's the answer. They didn't show, enough, show it enough well because, again, you know, when you're making a book into a movie, there's like there's like shit that you have to cut out. And a lot of train spotting has flashback where Mark and Sick and Sick Boy were really best friends. It's like, okay, it, to, to, to compare it, it's like the death of Sirius Black. Like if you watched Order of the Phoenix alone, 
you wouldn't have gotten the pressure that Harry was close to Sirius as much to, for him to mourn like that. But if you read the books, okay. three to five, you would have gotten the pressure like Harry cherishes this man and it sucks that he died. That, that's the whole point of the story. So, okay. so yeah, um, it, was, it, it was not just because, it was just from, from the fact that they couldn't have enough time to show the fact that Mark and Sid Boy were actually best friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, um, so yeah. I mean, like when when they when when Mark comes back, you know, he tries to live his life, and like I honestly, I honestly like that. You know, I only I, I honestly love those premises where it's a character coming home after so long, and him see like I I always love those premises because like you know it's seeing a changed world. Like he comes home, like he learns that his mom has died and that his dad's alone, and that you know that what what he did years ago matters now because like sick boys in a bad place sponge still an addict Bagby's in prison and I, I love that speech of like what of what Brenton has to like um to Veronica is like the remix of you know she was like real quick she was fucking beautiful she was hot oh she was really hot shit Veronica was gorgeous <laughs> she was hot she was really hot yeah she was uh, yeah I mean like and like when 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 Mark was talking about you know choose unfulfilled promise, wishing you've done it all differently, and he's looking at Diane because that was like the one person he felt a genuine connection to. I really felt bad for him. It's like, ah oh, shit, man. I'm like yeah, I I, I kind of wish that you had that unfulfilled promises fulfilled, because because now it's like you know you know and like he says you know, choose the slow regret to go from um and choosing what you can get versus what you've always hoped for. I was like. Damn, yeah, because that's that's reality. You don't always get what you want in life, which is like such a such a big thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah, that, that hit me hard. Like his speech to Veronica, and like, yeah, I I agree because we've all had a point in our lives where where you've had something that you wanted to achieve but you didn't, and I say like, now you regret it. So, like, do you agree or like, no? Nah, nah. No, I agree, and I actually like really liked that dialogue they had about um, when he was talking about all the shit from the. Like back in the day, he's like, "Oh, we said this and we said that," and it just like built up, and he was just like dumping everything on yeah. her that yeah. night they were in the restaurant. But it also kind of shows what a piece of shit he is because then he went and banged her, even though she claimed <laughs> she and even though sick boy said that they were dating, and it's like, hey, yeah, Mark, you're still kind of a douchebag. <laughs> yeah, like, even though sick boy is too, and it's like, I want to say the only issue i had with the story of that one is sick boy had every reason to hate him he said he was gonna like build up his trust and then really hurt him the only problem i had with that plan was we never really saw the moment when sick boy was kind of like i don't want to do this anymore yeah 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 yeah. he like we never really saw the build-up of him deciding i he didn't want to maybe the scene of him Maybe the scene of him like kind of acting weird around Begbie, like don't don't drag me into this. But it just didn't. There didn't seem to be a point where Sick Boy was like, "Fuck, I can't go through with this the way I wanted to." Yeah, because like, and remember at the very beginning, he was like, "I he's gonna fucking ruin his life." Like what we did, like, but like that's why I, that's why I think Sick Boy also has development. Like, wait, because he he didn't go through it. I mean, he could have. Like Mark Renton had nowhere to go. Like he he said, Mark Renton said, like, "I have nowhere to go. My wife's gonna leave me." The office is gonna fire me. I, I can I can stay here next. I have no choice but to stay here and do this business endeavor with you. But like, I like he had it at his house. Like Sigmund could have like stabbed him in the neck at any time, and he had no he had no defense. He had no no way to get out. But he didn't, which means like it shows that he, despite the shit he's done, like he really cares. Versus versus Bagby, who the minute he gets out of prison, begins searching for Mark. <laughs> Like, okay, yeah, Ben is a piece of shit in this movie, but, like, there are moments where, like, I... That scene, what he said to his son was so fucked up. Which one? When he said, you're not really my son or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, what a... But, I mean, he, at least he admits it at the end of the movie to him. He's like, yeah, exactly. I'm a fucking piece of shit, and you're not. Yeah, I was like, like, okay, at least he can admit it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I like it. Like, like even like that's why I like that's why I like these characters because they're really three dimensional. There's like 
it's not like a, it's not like oh I'm good I'm or I'm bad like a comic book movie like it's a bad guy and it's a good guy and that's what we have to, that's, that's what we work with. It's really it's really three dimensional to the point where like no they're like they're pieces of shit but they can do like they can do good things also or they can have good moments like for example like, Mark generally is a good guy but he has done some bad things. Begbie's a bad guy but he has those moments where like you genuinely feel like he he seems sorry like when he when Bagby said like um when Bagby said like you know um this fool I, I'm a piece of shit and I'm really sorry it's like I I genuinely felt for him it's like yeah I you're a piece of shit but I'm glad that you're admitting it <laughs> and, then, and then he goes and just kills tries to kill Mark Brandon anyway <laughs> I mean like, yeah. like you that could be like dude okay you said sorry and then please just I, I I hate when characters and regular people do that. They say something like, they say something like, I'm sorry for being the way I am, but I have to do this. And it's like, no, you fucking No, you don't. don't. Exactly. You don't, you don't have don't. to kill Mark. You, you don't. It, you can stay here with your wife and son. Put the bag down. Sit down. Try, you, you, you admitted you're a piece of shit. You admitted how great your son is. Stay here and do what you can to help him. Yeah. You don't have to kill Mark. Because yeah. look what it got him. It got him thrown in prison for life now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's not getting out. Ever. He's not getting out. He's not getting out. That, that's going to be in there forever. Like, like, <laughs> that's like, that's like, like I said, like, 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 you know, I would have wanted, like, dude, you're a piece of shit. But you can still have a chance. Like, you, you got out of prison. You can stay here in hiding forever and be with your son and give a redeemable relationship. But like... He threw it all away for... Revenge. Pointless revenge. It's like... That's honestly that's honest what I'm saying. Like, dude, it happened years ago. I mean, like, yeah, Sick Boy also held, held a grudge, but he stopped. Because you know why? Because they're, they're all so mature right now. That's what, the, that's what transpiring, T2 transpiring is about. Well, mature. Well, <laughs> mature might be stretching. Okay, okay, fine, fine. They're at least in a different mindset. Than what, fine. They're, they're, at least, they're at least in a different mindset than what they were. I was going to say, the first time, I always love that scene when Mark first goes and sees Sick Boy. He's like sitting there watching those like fucked up, tripped out music videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That was like, that's awesome. I, I, I want it. Want to know what scene? I genuinely went almost a different way than I thought. What? The scene when they went to Tommy's grave at the mountain. Yeah, that was... And Sick Boy told Mark, he's dead and it's your fault. Yeah. And then Mark was. flipped it around on him and was like, your baby's dead and it's your fault. Yeah. I was okay. like, he's going to fucking... I was like, these two are going to kill each other. Yeah, and I was I so did. worried. I was so I, I thought that... I genuinely thought Sick Boy was going to like, stab him or punch him right in the face for saying that. I seriously thought that was about to happen. Yeah, same. I also thought that was going to happen. But, like, I think, but also, like, you know, there are genuine moments where, like, Sick Boy and Mark have friendship. Like, when they're doing, like, you know, the scam, like, stealing the credit cards and then, like, um, uh, they sing that song, like, there are no more Catholics and, and like, everyone's, like, cheering, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they get out and then, like, and then they burn out and they're, like, what happened? Like, just fucking drive now. And then and they, they, they eject all the money. That was that was hilarious. Mm -hmm. No, this that's why I was saying this movie's got a lot of good. This movie, the, both of these are good. Just this one, like I said, this one just had a little more. It didn't have that gritty feel that the first one. Yeah, had. yeah, it, it, felt, did, it, it did feel more Hollywood mainstream. Yeah, because because Train Spotting, the first Train Spotting, was never it was never mainstream. It was an indie. It was an indie. Um, it was a cult film. It was a cult film. It was an indie cult, um, indie cult um, English film that was only meant to show in London because no other, no other countries wanted it. It was only when everyone said, holy shit, it's really good, that they, that they brought it to America. And everyone's like, oh, I love train spotting now. But like, no, I, have a, I have a quick question. <sighs> without, without me looking it up, because I obviously could, what does train spotting mean? Train spotting means like um, uh, when you train spotting is actually a sport that you do like there's a there's a sport that you do like where you like bird watching, but train spotting is like where you look at the trains like on, on on the tracks and have like various 
models, but like train spotting in the context of the film and, and, and books, train spotting means like that it's related to that scene of Begbie's dad, you know, like when they find Begbie's dad and like he's, you know, he's a hobo and he's like, what are you lads doing? Train spotting? Like, and he, like he's crazy and shit. That's actually like in the first train spotting book. So it's like, oh, so like that's what that. That 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 um in the book I am not sure I have to read I have to read I have to really go into it but I think that's the moment where Mark Grantham was like I have to get out of this life when they saw when he saw by Reese's father but that's 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 the one but I'm not sure that's the case I have to read I have to really read through it again but but that's basically what it is you know it's like okay. oh shit you know because that's what I was wondering and I wanted to save it for this just again for anyone listening who's not entirely sure what it means either <laughs> now we all know yeah exactly so like um i mean as at the end of the day i mean like tra t train spotting t2 train spotting they're really well written in the fact that we see yeah. these characters like at one point in lives and at another point in lives and how they're how they're coping and doing it i mean they they, they did it better than star wars ever did you know with the sequels <laughs> they did it way better because like mark we see because it <laughs> it feels real. Like Mark Renton at the place where he is in T2 Transporting feels like that is the place where he should be from his mm -hmm. actions. Sick boy, the same, but same, beg me, fucking same, all, all the same. And man, that, that ending, that Quick ending. Question. Where, yeah, what? Do you want to see these characters again? Yes, I do. Like, or, I do you, or do you want to see them again? Or do you think we're good? It's, it, T2 think, is a good time to say goodbye to them. I think at the, I think maybe. 10 years down the road, I want to see how they're sick. Maybe Begbie's changed because Begbie admitted like he's a Yeah, person. but he ain't getting out of prison. But he, you know, he's not getting out of prison. Like maybe his he, son. He, what he did, he knew that was it. He knew by breaking out, if he ever got caught again, it was life. Yeah, yeah. He, but he's not getting out. He's not getting out. But like, maybe I want to see like, I kind of want to see Renton and Diane like rekindle their 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 relationship because that was we like... Much of her, which huh? I... I I wanted to see a little more of her, but it's like, I always love that scene when they were walking out of her office and she just kind of looks at Mark and she's like, she's, she's a little young for you, isn't she? And he's yeah. like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, these two still have something. Like, I wanted to see them get back together almost. But yeah. she, at that point, she was like, dude, this guy is a fucking retrobate. Like, I fell in love with this delusional loser when I was like 16 years old. <laughs> Yeah, but like you know, that's oh, like, he's a nobody, and I'm his lawyer. Yeah, it was like I, I, I really feel like Diane and Renton could have been like something. Like I would, I would want to say maybe, maybe ten years down the road, like make it a trilogy, like T three Train Spotting, and make make it like their final like thing together. So and how then, many books? Are, how many books are there? Because there are, the first one was based. On, correct me if I'm wrong. The first one was based on the book Train Spotting. This yeah. one was based on porno. Yes, correct. There are. There are three. There are three books. Like it's a trilogy called Skag Boys, Train Spotting, Porno. And Skag Boys is like the very first word, like, oh, it's how they got into heroin. Train spotting is then in heroin and porno is like the aftermath. So So we would have to create a new book for them to base it on if he was gonna do a third one. Yeah, seen, or yeah, yeah, exactly. Because Danny Boyle said like he really based a lot of T2 train spotting on porno, but overall, I mean like it's its own thing. T2 Train Spotting, it's its own thing because not, they left, he left a fuck ton out of like, um, um, porno, the book. So like, um, uh, T2 Train Spotting. Did you do the same with Train Spotting? You left a lot of it out? No, Train Spotting is pretty accurate, but porno, it, 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 like there's like big chunks of that left. So out. do you think that they, they left a lot out of T2 because of, like we said, it wasn't as indie, it was more, Hollywood and Hollywood. No, it's because it, it was because um, they, uh, they didn't want to put as much of that into no, because it. The elements of porno were like, I think one too extreme for a, for a movie release. And the so fact like what, it would have gotten an X rating or something. Yeah, I like something like that. Because the whole point of like, remember the whole point of like Sick Boys endeavor in this one is to make like a brothel, but in, in this one, like. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> like, <laughs> he goes for a loan from the fucking government to make a brothel. And but, no, but like in, in, in the in the book, it's like he wants to make a porno. He wants to make an actual like porno with oh, God. and and get money from it. So yeah, that, that, that's the whole point of porno. That's why it's called porno. But like, um, 
and Sick Boy really is the main character in the third book. Mark Rennan is the main character in the first two. So, mm. so yeah, I mean, like, so overall, I mean, like, Chad, so would you want to watch this again? Or, like, you think, like, one, one and done, and that's it? No, 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 no. These are, I'll, I'll definitely watch these again at some point. Not anytime soon, but I, I will come back to these. I will come back to these someday. The, the, these, these, these are both, I'd say, very well made. I'd say if you haven't seen them, definitely check them out and if it's been a while since you've seen them give them a rewatch and watch them maybe watch them like i did i watched them both for the first time within two days of each other so it's like watch them close to each other and it's just interesting to watch uh the difference in lives that these guys go from these young heroin addicted hoodlums to grown men who are still criminals yeah Definitely. All right, so that's it for February. We're done with Mission Impossible and Train Spotting. So, uh, Chad, what's for March, man? <laughs> what else was for March? Dude? <laughs> so, I'd say so far, for the most part, we've done. I'd say, I'd say quality franchises. Wouldn't you? Since the, yeah, since very the much year? quality franchises. Yeah, I'd say everything we've done is, for the most part, pretty, pretty quality franchises yeah oh i i can't say the same for this from our the march we're about to do so um well except for the last week so ladies and gentlemen march 2021 santino and i are going to be reviewing all the leprechaun movies oh my god it's gonna be the last thing that's gonna okay, be okay so i i'll expand more on it on the first episode i grew up with these they're dumb. They're funny as hell. They are they're dumb. garbage, but they are just, they are so much. They are the Transformers franchise of the horror genre. They're oh, yeah. That's the best. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they are stupid. <laughs> All of them. Even the ones that are fun are stupid. Oh, yeah. And so to kind of, because it's going to be a mostly shitty movie month, we're going to end it with we're going to end it with quality we'll save that for the end of the month we'll let you know what it is then but we will end march on quality don't worry and don't forget also on march the snyder cut oh yes you'll be getting our review of snyder cut also oh yeah oh my god i can't believe we're so close we are so <laughs> close a few weeks away yeah, we are so close all right everyone this is santino signing off I'm Chad. Have a good night.